everybody, I'm your host, Jerk, and this is The Big Show, folks. Today is a good one, and while I normally spout a little filler monologue to get things going, I'm not going to do that today because there is just too much to cover. So go get yourself one part Campari, one part gin, and one part sweet red vermouth, Stir it in a glass, garnish, and take a load off with an awkwardly enjoyable Negroni while we bring out today's guest. The Tech Tree Tier 7 Italian Cruiser, the pride of Philadelphia. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Amalfi. Now, I have often said the Amalfi is one misunderstood cruiser. You don't see it often, perhaps due to its concealment or rolling smoke, and it's not exactly the ship that I take out when I want a case of the sweats. But it is a ship I really enjoy and can normally relax in like I'm on the beaches of Sardinia. But let's see who we brought to this beach party and put them up on the big screen. It's Mim Belly Baby. Along with a twist of lemon and a hint of Mikawa. A delicious cocktail in most situations. However, what have I stumbled onto in this match? Rather than my relaxing tour along the Amalfi coastline, I have found myself bottom tier in a legendary match that just happens to be full of some of the biggest tryhards to ever try hard. <laughs> yippee ki mother truckers. Now, one of those matches where I'm going to have to play this ship properly, floating like a butterfly and stinging like a bee. And more than anything else, one of those matches that just shows how good the game could be if instead of the development resources being dedicated to a class of ship that only one person can play per round and that you'll be lucky to see 20% of the matches, to instead be dedicated to those resources to the real carriers, and by that I mean the people who want crossplay divisions, training rooms, clans, etc. Now, if you didn't catch it at the beginning, I've got Let em Peak, Where Are You, AA Ron, and Bravo Foxtrot on my team. I know these guys are in a party and can communicate with each other, but they can't hear me. And I know they're streaming, but I wasn't watching, and while that doesn't necessarily mean the outcome of the match would change one way or the other, what it does mean is that if we had those features, it would be more fun for the entire team, rather than fun dedicated to one person sitting in a single ship at the back of a map. Anywho, we'll be getting patch notes next week, but I'm not holding my breath for anything game-changing, but listen to me. Getting all sidetracked instead of focusing on my training, running up the Philadelphia Museum of Art Steps, one-handed push-ups, one-handed pull-ups, one-handed sit-ups. Because you know we're going to have to step into the ring here. And we are going to go all ten rounds in a fight that comes down to the wire. This match started with me and a certain destroyer spawning on sea, this destroyer having little ability to do anything other than shoot torpedoes and sit in smoke, shot their torpedoes and sat in smoke only to be taken out by another destroyer whose only ability is to sit in smoke and shoot even more torpedoes. And though the Amalfi does have slow reloading guns, its HE alpha is quite high, and so First, I got a Salvo in the Khabarovsk, who was lurking around here, and then pushed the Shima to do a little damage to. Of course, the Amalfi doesn't have Hydro, so I can't exactly go out into the open to chase them. But even more so, where there is a Yamato sitting behind the cap, no doubt watching everyone's position via stream. Of course, that could be said for the numerous players on the red team, but uh, that's the joys of streaming. I've watched this game back a couple times because I always like to do a little post-game analysis and see where things have kind of gone different. And really, so far, I'm not seeing too much. It is, after all, pretty much myself, two destroyers, and a battleship, played by the aforementioned players, versus a battleship, a cruiser, and two destroyers, which means the other half is up against one destroyer, two cruisers, and two battleships, so the odds well not in their favor, are not completely out of their favor, though the red team does have an extra Yamato. 
So one of the things that the Amalfi has going for it is its low detectability, and I haven't been spotted for a while. I can see that Red Kabarovsk is in a gunfight with A.A. Ron, so I'm going to elect to put my plane up in the hopes of it keeping the Kabarovsk spotted for an extended period of time should A.A. Ron need to disengage. Another thing the Amalfi has going for it is its speed, and while not as fast as the Kabarovsk, it is close, or at least... Mine is, I think, with the top speed around 41 knots. And so I'm going to try and head this Kabarovsk off at the pass and remove them from the game because cruisers sink destroyers. It's what I need to do. Now, I don't know. Uh, I, I, I know this player. I don't know if they knew that I was going to be over here, but either way, um, pretty good play on their part. I am going to get a couple big salvos there, and they could have dropped spot right there, and that probably would have saved them. However, nice juke of the speed coming up here. You're going to see me miss. You can actually see the wake at the front of their ship there get smaller. That should have told me that they were slowing down, but nice way to get me to whip there. I am not pulling out any farther because I do know there is a Yamato around the corner, but with this shot, I'm going to get the Kabarovsk. And suddenly, we've got both of those legendary destroyers down. Meanwhile, over on the east side of the map, no doubt with the aid of their extra Yamato, the red team has sank just about everyone at B. And if I'm doing a critical analysis of this, I might say this is where we could have done things a little differently. But that's the benefit of hindsight and a downside of not having communication with the whole team. So if I were going to make some calls to some friends at uh, the Time Variance Authority or perhaps step into a phone booth with a certain someone from Gallifrey and go back and change things, I'd have Peak reverse his Yamato to F4, bow facing B. That's it. That's all I got. That is the only thing I can think of. And who knows if that would actually change anything anyway. Now, I have gotten into the cruiser position on this side of the island as we watch a skill wall of torps go flying by this Yamato. And you know what? Everybody forgets about the Amalfi Sea Mines. That Yamato skillfully dodged all those, but they are not going to skillfully <laughs> dodge all mine. So I'm just going to sit here and continue to farm damage on this guy because I really need to get rid of them. We can't have a Yamato on the backside with crossfire on us. Uh, things are already looking kind of iffy as is, but they would definitely stay worse if this Yamato were t allowed to continue to exist. And right there is when we lost peak. And that was when it was starting to look like a little trouble. Me, AA Ron, and Bravo Foxtrot versus two Yamatos, a Suzuya, a Cleveland, a Charles Martel. <laughs> And a turpent, if now that I think about it. But these sea mines finally catch up to this Yamato, and they're going to take a couple of them. And I'm just going to sit here and end up finishing this ship off. We will see you in hell, Yamato. And with that done, we can assess the situation. Now I know what you're saying it's over, jerk. You're done. There ain't no shame. Just in the fight. But I'm here to tell you. Ooh. And though we can't communicate directly here, it does look like we're all pretty much in agreement here. Bravo and I will head to D and try to deal with the majority of the fleet. And A.A. Ron can stay centrally located and maybe, just maybe, we'll get some Torp Crossfires going. A.A. Hey, we're gonna do it. I see Bravo has torps going towards the turpit, so I'm going to try and get a fire on them and see if we can't get them to burn their damage control. Now, I also know that I can't stay hidden, and as soon as I get spotted, I'm gonna have the entire world targeting me, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use my smoke here and try and get as close to D as I can. But one thing I'm not going to do is just stop firing. There's just no sense in doing that. The Amalfi is quite speedy and quite maneuverable. So no sense in trying to hide. We've got to try and pull off something here. So as soon as I fire, watch how many people target me. 
And there we go. The entire team. It's over. It's over. If I could just get a fire on this turpits, then it would be done. But I just am not having the RNG luck for doing that. But uh, we're bobbing and weaving now because I'm the only thing that's going to be spotted. And if only I could get a fire on that turpits. But yeah, we are not getting the rolls that we need for that. So once I drop spot here, I'm going to turn into D and protect our destroyers as much as I can, whether that's by taking out the threats to them or attracting as much fire as I can so they can do their thing. Now, sensitive viewers may wish to cover their eyes as this is going to get bloody. All right, I just need to keep dancing here, and I may only be peck level to Ivan Drago, but I am faster and can bob and weave uh, that salvo. Meanwhile, I just need to get closer and closer to Clubber Lang up here in front of me. It's over, jerk. I I'm blind out there. I can't see nothing. I need you to cut me. Jerk, it's over. Just cut me. It ain't over. <laughs> I can see AA Run is now firing into the Charles Martel. There's Torps flying towards the Charles Martel, and the Charles Martel is going to make the big mistake and open up. And down for the count, but oh boy, am I taking some fire. All right, so I've got to position myself on this side of the island to hopefully break a little line of sight and maybe I can get my last heal off. I'm going to have one more after this. But we are still in a crossfire, so we have got to remove this turpits. I'm going to go ahead and line up and take my shot here. And this would also conveniently be a Kraken, but okay, I'm going to leave them on a sliver of health which Bravo is going to clean up. And you know what? No complaints here. I've told you all while we may mostly post Kraken videos on this channel, uh, it doesn't really matter that much about them. I just know that that's going to be a lot of ship sunk and that's generally going to be pretty entertaining. So I'm using my last smoke here to get it back into cover and I'm going to get behind this island. We get a couple more sea mines on a Yamato and... This is when I looked up and realized, hey, hey Ron was gone. <laughs> we're going to have to win it for the kid. <laughs> and we're in a tough situation here. I'm about 20 seconds away from having a heal as long as Bravo stays in my legendary perk range. But he doesn't know that any moves out of there. So that actually sets me back just a little bit. But once I can get this heal off, then I can come out on the right side of this island and we can see that Bravo is moving west. And this is going to allow us to set up a crossfire with Torps. And should they turn to dodge Bravo's Torps, that will give me broadside to their ships. I can't sink the Yamato with Amalfi's torpedoes. They just aren't strong enough. And I don't have the health to be able to take out a Cleveland and Yamato. Add on top of that, that I don't know what Bravo's Torp situation is right now. So I am just trying to be cognizant of seeing them and time my motion at the same time. And all things considered, when you think that we can't hear what the other is saying or thinking, while the timing is slightly off here, it is still pretty darn good. So I see the first wall of torps. That is time for me to move. That also tells me that Bravo was spotted. So we just need to go and make our final move here. Time is ticking. The Cleveland takes one Torp, and I should have decent access to their side. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get a Dev Strike here. In fact, we just end up getting one Citadel. But if I can turn far and fast enough, we can drop a set of Torps. I go down. I'm looking to see if those Torps are going to hit the Yamato. They're turning in. That's not looking good. The Cleveland turns towards Bravo. Takes two Torps, and there's the Kraken. 244 in the Amalfi. In a very good game, regardless of anything else. 
All right, let's see this scoreboard. 2,374 XP and a loss for a very good game and... Come on, blue team, I need you to do something, anything. What more do you want me to do? Uh, this is the life of the Super Chad Ultra Unicum trying to carry self-appointed Super Unicum players. I'm kidding, they know that. If you haven't seen AA Ron or Let Him Peak's channel, I have linked to them down below, though if you suffer from hypertension, check with your doctor first. And that's going to wrap it up for this one, so let's all chill with an Aperol Spritz and a like if you enjoyed this one, or give it a dislike if you're a filthy stream sniper. Subscribe so you don't miss me school the Knicks fools. Thanks for watching, folks. I'll get back out there for another one soon, and we'll talk then.